fundamentals. So, anybody's ever been through um, a pistol class or a shooting class, you get familiar with the fundamentals of marksmanship. Usually there's seven listed or eight listed. If you go down by order, you got grip, stance, sight line, sight picture, breathing, um, trigger control, and then follow through, and then some people add concentration to it. So basically I've broken those down into a larger subset with small ones in between. So you got stance and grip, but for me that's part of your body position, what you need, to, where your body needs to be, including your hands whenever you're uh, shooting. So you got your stance, you guys have already done your, your defensive tactics for the most part, so you guys know what your interview stance is or your ready stance, um, defensive stance. You got your ready position. So whenever you're shooting, you're basically here, you're ready. If there's a uh, situation where you have the gun out, but you're not up on target, it's basically a ready gun or a low ready. So, so that we know that we're all on the same page with safe and empty weapons. Got a training magazine that I actually made up here so I can manipulate the gun stuff without it actually locking it back open when I don't need it to. So those are empty. So ready position can be one of two positions, and I'll, you'll hear me say low ready or ready gun whenever you're in that position shooting. And either way, <coughs> you're doing it, your body position should be about the same way. So for the gun itself and where it should be placed, I'm good with ready or low ready being here, or if you're out but you're not up on target, just below your eye line, the gun is down at you know not quite a 45 degree but a little bit low. That way you can see everything that's going on, but you're not sights on target and gun on target. And then your shooting position will basically be sights come up to your eyes. Now the overall position of your body needs to be an aggressive stance. You're in a fight, but instead of a fight with your hands, you're in a fight with a gun. So when you're fighting somebody, you got that good aggressive stance, your body is squared up, your dominant leg might be back a little bit, not all the way back like the old weaver stance that people used to shoot in, but pretty dominant stance. You're squared up to your target, Feet are a little shoulder width or a little bit uh, further apart. You're bent forward at the knees and you're slightly bent forward at the waist. So it's a good aggressive stance. So if you're fighting, you're in a fighting position like this, but instead of using your hands, all you're doing is you're just changing to a gun. Same aggressive stance as if you're in a fighting position. So you've probably seen the old fighters back in the day that used to do this, right? Is that a good stable shoot, uh, fighting platform? Well, it's not a very good stable shooting platform either, especially because you could go side to side. Um, with the weaver stance that I was talking about, the old full weaver stance was basically you're bladed like this, you're holding the gun up, this arm is supporting it up, and the thought behind it was, I want to make myself a smaller target. So instead of somebody shooting this much of me, I only want them to shoot at this much of me, which Back in the day, nobody was wearing body armor. So it's fine if you're shooting like that. But these days, we all wear body armor. Cops do, even some bad guys you wear body armor. Military's gone to where they wear body armor a lot now, where we used to not do that. Used to wear the old flak jackets, and then they went to where we're actually wearing body armor. Well, if you're wearing body armor, you need to be squared up to your target. Cause God forbid you do take a round, you want it to hit in those plates in your body armor. If you're turned sideways like this, that's where the weak part of your body armor is because it comes together there. It either snaps in the front or snaps on the side, but your weak part is here. And if I'm shooting like this and a bad guy's shooting and he happens to get a round through here, where's that round going to go? It's going to go into my vital organs here, which I need to function and keep going. So that's why one of the reasons you want to square up to your target. Another reason you want to square up to your target is you're using your natural point of aim. You're using what your body naturally wants to do when you come out and you're on target. If you're fighting against your body, it's going to show on the target because you're going to be fighting it against what your natural, your body naturally wants to do and the gun's going to go the way that it wants to go, wherever your body naturally lines up. When we get on the range, we'll actually demonstrate that, where if you're not lined up correctly, and if you're in close proximity, uh, seven yards and in, you should be able to basically point shoot, which means you're going to bring the gun up to your eye line, you're not really going to focus on your sights, don't take from this that I don't want you to use your sights. I want people to use their sights. But if you're in close quarters, close quarters battle, then basically you come up, if you use a natural point of aim and you punch straight out, you can just flash over the sight, get a small picture of it, and then you can put rounds accurately on target. Are you gonna be doing a group like this, doing that? No, probably not. 
but this is combat shooting, it needs to be done quickly and effectively. So yeah, your, your um, group might be like that, but you're still getting good rounds on target, effective rounds that'll stop the threat if you need to. So your body position is there. We talked about grip already. The grip starts in the holster. So grabbing the gun high up on the back strap, doing that release, bringing the gun out, marrying those two hands together, and then coming up on target. I've still got that good aggressive stance. I'm not leaning back like this and shooting, okay? It's hard to manage recoil when you're doing that. Just like I talked about the old pugilists when they're fighting like this, they used to go, that was their stance back in the day, back in the old Jack Johnson or whoever, back in, I'm kind of old, but I'm not that, quite that old. Um, so that stance, really, we don't use that anymore. You can ask him. I, I guarantee you, that guy knows probably more than anybody in the room about martial arts and fighting, and I guarantee you he's probably never stood like this to fight anyone. So it's That's just not a good effective stance. But the grip starts in the holster. So that's part of your body position, the way your body is actually, um, you're standing and you're gripping the holster as part of your body position. Stand with your feet, approximately shoulder width apart. Keep your weight on the balls of your feet, bend your knees slightly so you can move in any direction. If you're using that stance and you need to move off or step off somewhere, it's a lot easier to do that than if you're in a stance like this and you have to move a little too much. It's too much movement if you have to move either left or right. If you've got that good aggressive stance, it's a lot easier to move. Again, if you've got the gun out and you're leaning back like this, it's a little harder to manage the recoil. I know guys that can do that and they shoot really well, but what happens is that follow-up shot, it takes them a little longer to get on target because they're leaning back even if you're a bigger guy, the gun is going to recoil way up a little further than it should because you're leaning back and you're not leaning into it and managing the recoil. Shoot well, but then it takes a second to get back down, get back your sights lined up, and then fire the next round. Whereas if you're being aggressive with it, and the gun will still flip up a little, but mostly your body's going back this way to manage the recoil, and it's a lot easier to get back on target than it is when it pops up like that. So you move the foot on your weapon side or dominant strong side back slightly. I have a tendency to just square up total, like a total isosceles where, you know, when, it, when I, I'm squared up to my target, pretty much on a line, my feet are on a line, and I'm coming out with my arms and I'm making an isosceles triangle. Um, again, perfectly okay with somebody putting their dominant leg back. It's natural for most people. Square your head and shoulders to the target, keep your back straight and head erect, unless you're using a modified weaver stance. So, full weaver is that stance I talked about where you're blading your body. Modified weaver is basically you're back about 45 degrees, you're still squared up to your target, but your dominant leg is back a little more than would normally be for somebody squaring up, but you're still squared up to your target. Have no problem with that either. It's just that full bladed position that makes things a little difficult. Draw your weapon, raise it to eye level. Don't bend your head down to the weapon level. Bring the gun up to your eyes. Sights always to the eyes. You don't bring the gun up and then you have to start moving your head around to see where your sights are. You should be looking at your target and gun goes straight up to your eye level, right in front of whichever your eye dom dominant eye you have and we'll figure that out in just a second. After you fire a weapon, continue to cover your target and scan for additional threats. And we talk about that cover scan in holster. Weaver stance, stand about a 45 degree angle to the target. It's actually a little more than that. Um, dominant foot's to the rear, bend your knees slightly so the weight's on the balls of your feet. Keep your shoulders at 45 degree angle and that's where the full weaver is your body. Your upper torso is not squared up on your target. You're basically bladed the entire time. Lock your weapon hand straight out and bend your elbow on your non-dominant hand. So basically that old weaver stance is like that. And you've seen a lot of old school, probably movies and cop shows that show people doing that. Push forward with your dominant hand, pull back with your non-dominant hand to create that isometric tension. Bring your weapon to eye level and keep your head erect. So that's a uh, example of the, the weaver stance. See how he's got that arm locked out here? That one's a little bit bent. This leg is a little bit further back. And then you've got a isosceles stance. See how he's 
Staying with feet proximal to shoulder width apart. Keep the weight on the balls of your feet. So you got that good aggressive stance. Bend slightly forward at the knees. So you allow for movement side to side or back and forth. It's a lot easier than having your legs tied up if you're in that, that full weaver stance. You might have to switch them up and move them over. Stand with your head and shoulders square to the target. Your body weight forward. Lock your arms straight out in front of you. Bring the eye, bring the handgun to eye level. And that's an example of that. So he's totally squared up to the target. Both arms locked out in place. Not locked out so much that you're like shaking, but you're locking them out. And along with locking them out, you're rolling those shoulders forward. So you get locked into the gun really good and you can manage the recoil a lot better. Talked about that fighting or tactical stance. Square to the target. Feet are shoulder width or slightly wider. Firing uh, side foot or your dominant side foot is slightly behind the support side foot. Good landmark is for the toe of the shooting foot to be in the instep of the support foot. So if I'm standing here, if you guys can see my feet, with that, I square up, but there's no problem with being back a little bit just because it's normal for somebody to have that dominant leg back a little bit. These are flex so you can absorb the recoil. They act as shock absorbers when moving in any direction. Shooter leans slightly forward and extends the arm straight out, bringing the sights to the eyes. You'll hear me repeatedly say that, sights up to your eyes, sights up to your eyes. Don't move your head down to the gun. Head is kept level to maintain balance, especially when moving. It's more conducive in engaging multiple targets and moving while shooting. So if I've got that good aggressive stance, that good combat stance, and whether I'm walking forward and engaging, or I'm walking back, or I'm moving side to side, or I'm going from multiple targets, one to the other, it's a lot easier to do that than it is if you got that weaver stance and you're just fighting a lot against your body when you're moving back and forth. Uh, specifically when you're engaging multiple targets to the left and to the right. And that's a good aggressive stance. Notice he's still locked out here. Dominant leg is slightly back, pretty much to the instep there. Allows for a lot more freedom of movement and a lot more um, shock absorb, uh, absorption whenever you're uh, taking care of the recoil or managing the recoil. So that was just basically from the standing. So kneeling position. Whether you're standing or whether you're kneeling, from the waist up, everything should be the same with the gun. You should be squared up. So all it is, if you're standing and you're going to a kneeling, you're just going to drop down to a knee, but not to the point that you can smash your knee on concrete or whatever else you might have, so just be cognizant of that. But there's really no reason to step forward, which you can do that, or there's no reason for you to step backward when all you have to do is just drop in place. I can stand right here and drop in the same place and drop on my knee. Everything for the waist up is exactly the same. The only thing you're doing is you're lowering your profile. So why would we want to do that? If we're firing and we've got some cover that we want to get behind, and if we're standing here, so this is the table, let's say that this is a concrete wall that only goes up to about right here. And I'm engaging a target, but I want to use cover. So the majority of me is out in the open, exposed. But if I want to use that cover, a good way for me to do it would be to get down in the kneeling where most of my body is behind the cover. So you might be in that kneeling position for that. Everything else is pretty much the same. The one thing you want to do when you drop down to the kneeling is make sure you keep that wide base. So you can go into a kneeling like so, but if I'm lined up too close, I'm going to be wobbly on each side. I'm not going to have a very, shoot, a very stable shooting platform. So some guys will even once they get down in it, they'll take a little bit of an extra step to the side so they can spread that base out a little more. And there's a lot more shoot, uh, stable shooting platform. You don't wobble back and forth whenever you're doing it. And some of you guys are already familiar with the kneeling because we, we did it out there several times. All right, ready gun or low ready? And then high point. So at times you might cover a subject um, who's ready to take aggressive and perhaps deadly action. In ready gun or literary position, you can see their hands. So you guys will probably be responding to an active shooter. So let's say you're in another building. You get the call, there's an active shooter in this building. You come in and you start clearing the building. 
Are you going to be clearing your building with your gun in your holster? No. Probably not, because you already are at a level that, okay, we know there's an active shooter in this building. We know they've been shooting people. I need to be ready to go as soon as I get in the door. So you're going to come in the door, but you're going to come in the door at a low ready. You're not going to be coming in like this and then trying to see everything that's going on through your sights. You just really can't do that. But you come in at a low ready so that you can still see everything that's going on as you're clearing or whatever you're doing. And when you engage a threat or you encounter a threat, all you have to do is just pop the gun right up to your eyes and you're there. So ready gun, you guys will definitely uh, would deploy that or employ that in what you're doing because you're clearing a building or you're going to find an active threat and you don't want to wait till you find the threat to go, oh, wait a minute, let me hold, let me draw out and be able to take care of business. Just be cognizant when you're doing that, fingers always staying off the trigger and you use a good muzzle discipline. Yes, you're going to be, you know, looking for a bad guy, which I guess they did that the other day when they were clearing some buildings. Did, did you have finger guns or? So be careful with those finger guns. Sometimes they can go off and hurt you. So anyway, uh, maintain good muzzle discipline, whatever you're doing, obviously uh, you're looking for people in there, but you just want to maintain one, that good muzzle discipline, and two, make sure the finger's off the trigger until you're up on the target and ready to fire if deadly force is, is authorized. So to take the ready gun or low ready, you should assume a standing position that we talked about earlier, extend and lock your arms below your line of sight, and need to be able to observe the subject's hands and waistline. So if there is a bad guy up there, and he's not a deadly force, but I'm giving him commands, but I've got a gun on him, and I've got the gun pretty much blocking what I can see his hands are doing, that doesn't do me any good. Because he might be able to do something, and I don't pick it up in time because my gun is actually blocking what I'm seeing. So ready gun, doesn't take that long for you to come up and be on target if you need to, but you could still observe everything that's going on. In the high point position, that's when you're ready to fire. High point, sights are up to your eyes, and then you're on target, ready to fire. Again, as long as there's you've reached that threshold of deadly force.